Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Seek and Destroy show. And today we're going to talk about Black Panther Wakanda Forever. I'm going to give you some of my thoughts on the movie. We're going to talk about spoilers, obviously. And then we're going to get into what I hope for for the next phases of Marvel. Uh, because I did this just recently. I, just, I recorded just a little bit ago, but with Black Adam in the DC Universe. And I kind of lend my thoughts on that one. So you can check that out if you want to hear my thoughts on the DC side of things. But for here for Marvel, I got a lot to say also. Um, but a little, maybe a little less criticism on some level, but still criticism for sure. Uh, but Black Panther, let's start with Wakanda Forever, because this movie, obviously going into it, had a lot, you know. And I think uh, one of the first major controversies on some level, uh, there's a fandom out there that really wanted uh, Chadwick Boseman to be recast. You know, they wanted the role of, uh, you know, the Black Panther himself, T'Challa, recast. And although I can appreciate that passion... It's probably something I, I would disagree with. Uh, and, and obviously Ryan Coogler did too. Because Ryan Coogler is coming at it from someone who collaborated with Chadwick on a daily basis. You know, working with someone every single day uh, on this first film and making that first film a massive success. Um, and doing it really well. Like, I mean, besides some of the CG uh, criticism that I had in the third act especially, overall as a Black Panther fan, I was so enamored with that film and Chadwick's performance. I was blown away and was like, okay, this is great. This is a great first start to Black Panther. And so I imagine with all that in your head and being the guy in charge of that, you know, writing and directing the sequel, I, you know, you're trying to write dialogue for T'Challa and you just break down and cry, I'm sure. Um, and it's just gets too hard. And I think sometimes these, you know, the fans that don't want or they want Chadwick, uh, they wanted the character re recasted. I don't think they're really factoring that in. Some do. Some go, hey, all right, you don't want to recast him now? Recast him in the next movie or the, or the fourth one or whatever. Um, or do an alternate universe version of him, you know, whatever. And so there are some fans out there that do. But then there are the really passionate ones, um, kind of like the Snyder Cut, where they have their really passionate ones that only want things a certain way. And that's kind of how this fandom was. And so I'm like, ah, again, I appreciate that passion for sure. But I just don't agree with that, that decision. I probably, in Ryan Coogler's shoes... Would have tried to do the same thing however telling the story of shiri becoming black panther that to me was done way better in the comic books now obviously they had to do a lot in this one movie so it's not fair you know because in the comic books you had reggie hudlin who was writing it and from his first run who is black panther he set up that shiri on some level wanted to be the next black panther so he had already set that up and then they moved you know in that direction for 40 something issues and then the book got rebooted and then with the new deadliest of the species reboot uh the new number one they came out with shuri became black panther and even still it took her to like issue five or six to do it because she had to prove herself to the elders and everything you know and it was it was a lot of hard work and and, uh, and that was the thing was that it was a lot of hard work i felt like in this shuri is a very different character in the movies than she is in the comic books so her journey, although took hard work and ha she had to work through grief to do it and anger to do it, um, mainly she had a lot of machines help her. <laughs> and then also the convenience of the villain handing her, uh, you know, you had Namar give her that necklace, which had some of that, you know, original, um, you know, thread or root or whatever in it that she could make the flower from. So to me, Shuri didn't earn the mantle of Black Panther as much as she did in the comic books. But again, that was probably going to happen anyway because obviously the comics had more time to breathe with the storyline so I was probably going to feel like that no matter what on some level but in this you know with her you know trying to make the plant and everything she's she's literally given that plant by Namar at one point and so she you know takes that little root or whatever from it and she scans it and her machine does all the work and they replicate you know the the original flower and then when she takes the flower she goes and you know to the next realm and she sees Killmonger of all people because she shares his hatred. You know, the world has taken from her so much and she's young and she's angry about it, much like Killmonger was. His father was taken from him at a young age and he had lost a lot and that built rage in him. So I like that comparison. I thought that was good, but still once she gets the flower and she punches that mannequin and knocks it across the room, you know, or whatever through the wall, then she's just Black Panther and she can all of a sudden fight as well as you know T'Challa did she can uh fight as well as Namor you know, on some level even though she had to kind of outthink him a little bit um which was great because she used her mind to weaken him and then she fought him but she still you know uh, she she surprised me with the, as much ability as she had fighting wise but I guess you know you can argue rage does that to you anger does that to you 
um, but it also can blind you, and that's how she felt towards the end is blinded, and that's why ultimately she doesn't kill Namar. So I do, I understand the beats. I understand the arcs. I understand the, the character um, and the journey Shuri goes on, but I just feel like on some level, you know, just, there was a disconnect for me as far as her earning the full title. Um, it felt like, oh, she's the next in line bloodline wise, and she recreated the flower, so it just it has to be her. And and I'm like, well, I guess to for her to complete her story on some level, yes. But I just felt like there was more capable warriors that would have been like imagine a Koye or a Nakia with the flower. Um, like holy cow, would they be? unstoppable <laughs> like for sure um but i would have liked a montage scene of like umbaku training shuri maybe or okoye train or all of them training shuri maybe like it, she, maybe she starts taking a break from the science because over the year since her brother died she couldn't come up with a cure or replicate the flower so she goes out and trains while her machine is trying and she's like punching a punching bag and then you know someone sees her do that and go hey if you want some, you know, kickboxing training or something, I'll show you. And then she then she goes out in the woods and she's kicking trees or something. And then Umbaku sees her and goes, hey, if you want, I'll give you some training on like how to do like cool arm grabs and, you know, and everything. And then she could have applied all that towards the end, as well as thinking, using her brain to weaken you know, Namar um, with Riri. Then when she got physically, you know, to fight him, she had all this training to do. I just, I would have liked to see more of that kind of stuff, you know, and especially for a movie that was almost three hours long. I'm like, you, you could have cut some of this other stuff out and fit that in. Um, not that the movie felt long. It, it it was good. It was a good pace movie, but I just, I would have liked to see more of Shuri, you know, training, I guess, and, and, and letting out her frustrations in a non-scientific way um, on some level, just to kind of make her mirror the comic version a little bit more, as opposed to her just getting the flower and being like, boom, I'm, I can do it now. And it's like, well, it's, it's not that easy, uh, you know, um, as Killmonger has, has shown, but I guess that was the journey they were telling with her. So it makes sense that she would go in the final battle where you're even wondering if she'll survive it because, uh, she acts so much like Killmonger. Um, but I thought everyone in this Angela Bassett's so freaking amazing as Ramonda. She's so good in this movie. Um, and I think the guy who played Namor was good too, but this whole thing where he, they, they were saying, oh, he's an anti-hero and all this, He's to me, he's a villain in this movie. He's a full on villain. And I I don't know if I like that too much. I mean, he's literally drowned the city and women and children were at risk. And if it wasn't for Okoye and, and other characters, more women and children would have died. But I'm sure some did with all that destruction. And we know one mother that did die um, because of his destruction and everything. And so for me, I'm like, no, man, he's a villain. He's a straight up villain. Now he may be on the road now t forward uh, become an anti-hero and that could be one of those things where they say oh this is phase one of his you know growth and then in the next phase he'll be more he'll be more um, lenient on killing and then and then he'll finally find a way to redeem himself maybe that's the journey for the character and and that's fine I guess but I still felt like in this movie I didn't see a lot of anti-heroism in him I just saw someone who was like Dr. Doom in a way um, except he cares more about his people, I think, than Dr. Doom does. Dr. Doom has this uh, visage of like a, uh, of looking like he cares about Latveria, but really he's just like, hey, I run a country where everyone's obedient to me and everything is peaceful here for the most part, um, and that should drive Reed Richards crazy, <laughs> you know? So that's why he, he kind of does it all in the sake of looking good uh, to the world uh, so that he could one-up Reed Richards in a way. Whereas Namor, in this movie, that genuinely wants to protect his people and is willing to go to any lengths to do it. And while I understand that, um, some of the things he does, I don't think are very heroic. It's one thing to like take down a ship full of um, trained soldiers who are out to get vibranium to use it as a weapon against other nations. That's one thing when he does it at the beginning, but to go and drown Wakanda um, and flood it and, and try to kill, you know, women and children there uh, and everyone else, like uh, even just peaceful farmers and people who just live there, uh, he's he's kind of a monster for that. And so that's why I'm like, ah, I don't see the anti-hero in him. Um, Riri, I understand they were like, we want to make the character, the, the scientist character who created this device that can find vibranium. We want to make it a character from the comics and we want it to be someone who's like a young, brilliant scientist. So we went with Riri Williams. I kind of get all that, but I actually didn't find myself like loving her in the movie. Like for a character that I saw so many people on the trailer reactions, like freaking out about that she was in the film, I was just kind of like, 
I don't know, man. I think I would have rather seen her Disney Plus show and just introduce her that way. Um, because you get so little of her. You get enough to where you're like, okay, she, her and her dad used to work on cars together. Her dad passed away. And then she, you know, much like Tony Stark, you know, she's she lost her father at a young age. And she got into me mechanics and, and engineering and everything. And she's very smart. And she's like a child prodigy. And she's been able to do things and create things that other countries' top scientists can't do. I have nothing wrong with that because if Tony Stark can exist like that, so can Riri Williams. There's someone who's just brilliant, uh, you know, but still has their flaws in some way. But I felt like Riri wasn't given really any flaws in this because she's not in it that much. So I'm kind of like, well, where where are her flaws other than her not being trusting um, at some point? But that makes sense. You know, people are out for her intelligence and people are saying they're going to come kill her. So I can understand her not being trusting. But to me, I'm like, ah, maybe they'll develop her more. Obviously, they'll develop her more in her show. So I'll give that show a chance to kind of hope it, it changes my mind on her. I thought Dominique, who played her, did a good job. But I just I wasn't blown away by the character at the way everyone seemed to be excited that she was in this. I was like, wow, man, people really love Ironheart. And then I saw the movie and I'm like, OK, she's cool. And that's cool that she developed a new suit and everything, um, which she told, you know, Shuri to keep in Wakanda. But uh, but, you know, she's probably going to go make another one, like a Mach 2 or Mach 3 or 4 or whatever uh, in her show. So we'll see where that goes. But for this, I was just like, eh, I, I wasn't blown away by her. But Aneka, I liked in this movie. Okoye, I liked in this movie. I thought her failing and, and then having uh, getting a chance to fight against a, a, a Tuma or a Kuma. Or, no, a Tuma. I think it's a Tuma. Uh, yeah, a Kuma Street Fighter. Uh, a Tuma, when she got a chance to refight you know, him towards the end. Um, in her new suit, uh, I thought that was cool. I was like, all right, so she had a she had an arch nemesis in this film who beat her, and then she, you know, overcomes them towards the end. So there was a lot of stuff in here that I liked, um, uh, and Aneka, her role increasing, I liked her a lot. Uh, I thought the character was really good, and uh, and same with uh, you know them setting up, I guess the future of Black Panther, where you have Mbaku now who's going to be uh you challenge everyone to be king and uh, and and i don't think anyone you know uh rose to that challenge i think he's just going to be king um and then you have you know, shuri out there now with nakia and the son of t'challa we just found out exists who you see earlier in the movie he actually goes up when all the kids go up to ramonda when she comes to the school and he's like hey are you looking for the headmistress and then you know ramonda's like yes and he takes her to nakia so that's actually the same kid and uh and so he you know, he might, he's probably going to be the, you know, uh, future Black Panther, Young Avengers, Black Panther, whatever they decide to do with that character. Um, but you have, he goes by the name T'Challa. So maybe that's their way of bringing around a new T'Challa, you know, and uh, and maybe at some point in Secret Wars or some, you get time travel coming up with Kang, you could have someone, uh, you know, him from the future come back in time. And they're like, who are you? And he's like, I'm T'Challa. And then he takes his mask off and you're like, it's a different actor. And you're like, I don't understand. And he's like, my father was T'Challa and I'm the little boy T'Challa that you know currently in this time period. Um, so you could still do stuff like that with, with him. So, uh, so yeah. So overall though, I, I thought the movie was good. I, you know, I, I liked it more than Black Adam, but I didn't love it. And I was surprised that I didn't love it because as you saw my videos leading up to the movie, I was really excited for it. And, uh, and I was really kind of taken aback that I didn't love it as much as I did. I mean, you know, I loved everyone in it. I thought it was great for the most part. I even uh, Leticia, who plays Shuri, I was like, she's good. She's a good actress. I just wanted to see more of that training. I, I Maybe it's because I'm a Rocky fan and I like training montages, but I just thought that would have added something to the character of her being so angry that she can't just be in her science lab all the time. She goes out and trains, and, and then other people saw her train and help her, and she can learn things from Umbaku and Okoye. So by the time she puts on the suit and takes the flower, she's kind of had some of the best teachers in Wakanda um, for fighting. And that to me would have been awesome. Um, but Lupita Nyong'o, I'm absolutely in love with. She was awesome in this film. And Winston Duke, who I'm also in love with, <laughs> he was fantastic in this film. And I can't wait to see where those characters go in the future, as well as Shuri. Um, so we'll, we'll see uh, where they go. And then Okoye and, and, uh, and everyone else, like, uh, and Namar, you know, I'm, I'm, and Aneka, like, I really, I want to see this world continue because I'm a Black Panther fan. But I'm I'm curious because at the end of the last movie, I was sure I knew where they were going to go. And then with Chadwick's you know tragic passing, of course, none of us knew where it was going to go for the most part, um, maybe besides Shuri being Black Panther. 
So I, I have no idea where they're going to go now. And uh, and that's on some level uh, kind of exciting and, and also a little scary too. So we'll see. We'll see what, what happens with the future. And speaking of the future, we do have the future of the Marvel Universe coming up because this is the end of Phase 4 now, and uh, which has been a bumpy ride. I know a lot of people out there have straight out hated Phase 4. Uh, I am not one of those people. I, uh, I Yeah, uh, Black Widow, just like a meh movie. You know, like there's been some meh movies. Eternals, I think, was a bad movie. Um, in my personal opinion, I think it was a bad movie. Um, but some of the Disney Plus stuff I've liked, like I love the first half of WandaVision. I personally just liked all the, the sitcom-y stuff, the black and white stuff, and then into color and the you know 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. I just liked all that stuff. Once it started getting to the end where it was a normal Marvel show, I lost a little bit, a bit of interest there. Uh, Winter Soldier and, and Captain America, or Falcon and Winter Soldier, that I liked too. Again, I was just kind of like meh about, but it introduced Eli Bradley, so I'm, I'm curious to see more of that. You know, I'm a big Young Avengers fan, so I'm, I'm curious to see where that goes. And then uh, Loki, though, I loved. I loved every episode of Loki. I loved the aesthetic of that show, and I loved that it set up Kang the Conqueror, um, who I am actually a big fan of, uh, despite his recent appearance in Venom comics that I haven't liked too much. Um, I just, I like him a lot. And especially when he works with Dr. Doom and stuff and, uh, and interacts with uh, Avengers and Fantastic Four members, I've just loved that character. He's, he's really neat. And I actually, I think I have a King to Conqueror Moon Knight comic book. I should probably dive into at some point, but we'll probably do that on my new Moon Knight podcast when I start doing that. Uh, so it'll be a while for sure. Um, but as far as like the the future of Marvel, like, uh, oh, and then also to wrap up phase four, like obviously Moon Knight, I loved a lot. And then What If was really cool. I liked that show. So I I thought there was good thing. Shang-Chi, I like, a, or Shang-Chi, I liked that movie. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, and then Spider-Man was awesome. And I liked the Doctor Strange sequel when that came out. But, and then I liked this movie. So yeah, there was some th- things I didn't like. I didn't love Thor, Love and Thunder. You know, that was just a man movie to me. Black Widow was man. Eternals was bad, I feel. Some of the Disney Plus stuff, like Miss Marvel had me on episode one, and then it lost me um, pretty early on, unfortunately. Although I still like the girl who plays Miss Marvel. It just kind of was like a mass show. She-Hulk, another one where I was like kind of, actually, I would say that was a bad show. I didn't, I'm not even going to give that a man. I didn't like She-Hulk that much. So, so I, I didn't think Phase 4 was a huge mess the way a lot of people portray it as, or think it is. Um, I just think it had a lot more bumps in it than marvel usually has in their stuff um because mostly marvel makes mass stuff to me uh, you know to some degree but with little flashes of brilliance and uh, and cleverness and a great connectivity um, and that's what i think elevates it from man to above man on some cases uh but now we're going into phase five and we got ant-man coming up and i think guardians three this year and captain marvel and then a, a couple of new shows as well which by the way werewolf by night was awesome great holiday special uh the the christmas special for guardians i didn't really like that much i it was mad uh, to me so so moving into the future of marvel i i really hope that it, there's just a, a better focus because i think what phase four the reason why it had a lot of bumps and, and rocks in the road is because phase one was like let's set up avengers right and then phase two and three were let's set up Thanos and kind of build towards Endgame. In phase four of Marvel, it feels like, all right, we're going to set up the gods. You know, we got Moon Knight and we got the gods, you know, which builds off of Black Panther a little bit. So we're going to set that up. And then we're going to have Werewolf by Night, which is going to kind of set up supernatural stuff in the Marvel Universe. And we also apparently had a cameo of Blade, or his voice at least, at the end of Eternals, which was a, one of the worst post credit scenes of all time. Um... So that's also setting up the supernatural universe. Then you got like Captain Marvel and there's going to be stuff out in space with um, probably starting in Guardians of the Galaxy where you're going to have uh, what's Adam Warlock and stuff. And you're going to have all these other characters coming in high evolutionary. So you're going to have your space stuff. Then you're going to have your your stuff on Earth, your multiverse stuff uh, with Doctor Strange and other characters. And you have your Shang-Chi. So you have like kind of your street level, vil- you know, villains and heroes as well uh, going around. Um so it, sound, it feels like it was it's setting up a lot. Like, all right, here's we're setting up this corner of the Marvel Universe, this corner, this corner, this corner, and all, all that. And here's the center. And, uh, and the center will be the multiverse and time travel with Kang. And I think that's where they kind of lost it. It was like, ah, I understand you're going to go and do all these things probably, but maybe you shouldn't have done them all so soon. Maybe you should have just been like, let's do the Kang time travel stuff and let's, let's get away from the space stuff for a, a minute have some street level characters, you know, and then maybe set up some supernatural stuff 
for the next phase but but that's it you know like they, they should have kind of i felt like reined it in just a little bit more on some level but maybe phase five will be different maybe they'll build off of those things and it'll feel organic and natural uh, because you can still retroactively fix some of this stuff i feel i don't think anything's so majorly broken you can't retroactively fix it um so i feel like that's probably what they're going to try to do is put a focus on you know going back and going all right how do we make that thing not feel like people need to skip it like how do we make people feel like eternals is something they have to see um you know so let's make even if we don't make eternals too let's bring those characters back and put them in secret wars and give them a big moment in it where they fight a celestial and then if you're wondering how that gets set up you can go watch eternals like i feel like that's going to be the focus moving forward and we're going to start seeing that as they develop kang um, because now with kang you can time travel you got multiverse you got all these things that you can bring in um although i feel like since they did time travel with endgame it's kind of neat that they're starting this next phase where they're like yeah, that was how they defeated the villain the first time with time travel and outthinking him on that level, uh, but then had to team up and use brute force as well. Uh, but then in this one, you can't beat him with time travel. So how can you beat him? And I think it's going to be searching the multiverse for a Kang who is a good guy. And maybe that leads them to Iron Lad. And then you have the young Avengers fight Kang with uh, the other Avengers in uh, Kang Dynasty or something. But Ant-Man I'm curious about because I love Paul Rudd. And also uh, Newton, the young lady, Catherine Newton, I think her name is. She's from Supernatural, which obviously I'm a big fan of. And, uh, and I'm excited to see her in this film uh, as, as Cassie. Um, that's going to be awesome because I love Stature, the character she is in the comic books from Young Avengers. And I think this is them setting that up. And she's going to meet Kang in this movie. And Kang, a version of him uh, from another timeline when he's her age, uh, they fall in love. You know, she actually falls in love with an alternate universe, Kang the Conqueror who becomes Iron Lad. So, uh, you know, th if that's something they set up in these movies, that would be really awesome too. Um, but so I'm, I'm interested for Ant-Man. And after that, I don't know, and Loki season two, I guess. Uh, but after that, w you know, we'll see. I, I don't know how much more I'll talk about the Marvel Universe until more Supernatural stuff pops up or more X-Men characters pop up. Um, until then, I don't know if I have much say. Miss Marvel, they did announce that she is a mutant and Namor is a mutant. Uh, so they're already introducing mutants in this world. Uh, so I um, imagine we'll get to the X-Men pretty soon, but I imagine they're going to want to also wrap up the Kang stuff and then they'll have Deadpool, you know, build on the threads of mutants a little bit more and then go from there. So, yeah, we'll see. I'm excited for Deadpool, though. That's probably my most anticipated film of the next phase. And and that's coming from someone who's a Kang fan, but yet I'm still more excited for uh, Deadpool because I'm a Hugh Jackman fan and Ryan Reynolds fan. And I'm so happy they finally get to make their dream movie. And it's going to be set in the Marvel Universe on some level, too, which is going to be awesome uh, for sure. So let me know what you, your thoughts are. I mean, obviously, I have more thoughts of the Sony Universe than anything because we have kind of heard more about their plans for that. So maybe I'll make another video on the Venom vlog next season about where I think and hope the the Sony Marvel Universe will go forward. Um, that'll be fun. So I'll, I'll do that so we can complete the tri trinity, I guess, of these universes. Um so let me know what you think of, you know, the future of Marvel down below. Um, you know, are you scared about where they're going to go from here? Did you like Phase 4? Uh, did you hate Phase 4? Like, whatever your thoughts are, let's keep talking down below and have the conversation going. Because I, I genuinely want to know. Like, I want to know what you guys liked about, uh, you know, Phase 4, what you didn't like. You know, are you a Moon Knight fan like I am? I don't think so. I think some people that show didn't resonate with uh, at all. But for me, on many levels, it actually resonated with me more so than I ever thought possible. I mean, that was a character I never, ever dreamed of being that invested in and even knowing his background and everything. And then turns out my life turned out to be more like his on some level than anything I've ever I thought was could be possible. Um, and I've been hit with a lot of reality shaking things since my aneurysm. And that was probably the biggest uh, this year. So to learn that and then soon after the show air... Um, you know, like a month later or whatever, like just, you know, everything happens for a reason, right? I guess. Um, so I, there was parts of phase four that really resonated with me and, uh, and that I loved. And so I hope there's that in phase five. That's all I can say, you know, for sure. But I, I hope there is something that I loved as much as Moon Knight. Um, if, even if it's Moon Knight season two, like whatever it is and Werewolf by Night, I love that as well. So if there's stuff like that in phase five, uh, you know, that'll be the stuff I'm here for, for sure. 
Uh, but let me know again your thoughts. We'll keep talking down below. Thanks so much. See you in the future. Peace.